Welcome. This video message is broadcasted from one of the historic capitals of Hysteria, the city of Vienna in Austria. My recording studio is the bedroom, the home office of many of us in this time of remote teaching, researching and studying, a place often attempted to be hidden from the computer camera, a place of comfort and distress, a place where this video maybe also reaches you. I decided to record this video message in my bedroom as the bed has been the crime scene of many historic case studies on and performances of hysteria. The bed also illustrates how systematic oppression and marginalization in the name of hysteria have continuously been disguised as singular private instances rather than the actual widespread societal forces that lie at the heart of such portrayals. The bed is also the location where the daily contagiously viral news circuit of hysterical media finds us right after we awaken and before we try desperately to fall asleep, often shaping the mood of our day to come. Confronted with the seemingly never ending flood of information around public discussion of hysteria, we might ask, is this a new age of hysteria? It appears that there is an epidemic of hysteria in the United States which is the locus of this discussion, but also beyond such porous concepts of borders. In response to the new iteration and the uses of hysteria, this self-guided online conference seeks to understand these timely conversions of hysteria, politics and performance strategies in the light of the upcoming US presidential election in fall 2020, that already promises an intensification of hysterical discourse. Whereas previous hysteria studies have been favoring the singular hysteric, this project is dedicated to bridging the research gap from the individual to the collective hysterical body in current public discussions. On such pressing topics as the COVID-19 pandemic, the Black Lives Matter protests, or climate change, among many others, um, that address social injustice and human rights violation that have just become more transparent in recent months. And that evidently changed previously established notions of race, gender, and class around the representation of hysteria. Critical race and sexuality studies will be discussed in the following presentations in terms that can address how hysteria is still instrumentalized to disenfranchise and discredit those who speak up and protest against social injustice, but also how hysteria and the performance repertoire associated with this term is reclaimed as a form of empowerment, and two, how, for example, white supremacy or what Erica Edwards calls conservative histrionics can be read as a form of hysteria. It is therefore the aim of the self-guided online conference to investigate the multitude of dynamics that come into play when hysteria is summoned to discuss pressing topics of our time. The guest speaker will also shine light on the two often neglected parameters of race and gender that haunt the term since its early beginnings and they very evidently come to the forefront in those current discussions. We will see that concepts of race have been at the core of the hysterical project and have been cemented into to its foundation for centuries. I'm following here the influential work of Sandra Gilman and his peers who have demonstrated how race has been at the core of representations and imaginations of hysteria since the very beginning. As Alice Meinbaum has demonstrated in her book, Wayward Reproductions, even Sigmund Freud, who is until today a much cited reference when it comes to all things hysterical, was himself influenced in his studies on hysteria by racist, anti-Semitic, and sexist discourse of his time. In addition, several papers have unveiled the homophobic and anti-Semitic presumptions of such hysterical iconic case studies as Dora or Anna O, and the unfortunately too often mm. forgotten male and queer medical performers that have proven that the dynamics that come into play to oppress, violate, and dispossess under the label of hysteria are much more complex than the prevailing notion of the singular white girl and young woman who are still the center of artistic and academic attention when it comes to hysteria. This program starts with Professor Erica Edwards, who looks in her presentation, Terror, Contagion, and the Psychopathology of Empire, 
on black conservative histrionics at a group of public performances of Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron and his black histrionics affected the now familiar move of making black protest appear hysterical. Professor Edward sees blackness that surfaces in Cameron's speeches as histrionics as a crucial point in negotiating between racial terror and late imperial power, which she illustrates through her most recent studies on black women and the culture of US empire. Professor Kathleen McHugh shows in her presentation, hysterical intersections, projection, conversion, rage, how the emotion of anger as a powerful hysterical emotion is prevailing today and shifts through conversion from the psychological to the social. By means of two highly topical examples, she demonstrates what the terms hysterical internet intersections of race and gender that are compelled into relation by anger in socially and effectively fraught performative moments in public discourse. These two representations that discuss the mass hysterical dimension of pressing public discussions of our time are followed by two specific case studies that focus on the intersection of madness, blackness, and hysteria. In Professor Lamar Chorel Bruce case study, Miss Lauren Hill sings truth to power in the key of madness. He muses on how pundits used hysteria as an analytic for reading Hill's performance practice at the turn of the 20th century, and how Hill blackened and radicalized the figure of the hysteric. Professor Terry Pickens performs in Black, Being Black, Mad, Mad Black, or New Decade, Not So New You, a close reading of the first chapter of Octavia Butler's novel Fletchling and unveils how the triangle of madness, blackness, and womanhood makes meaning in a text, adding an important discussion of how race, gender, and disability have particular functions in the content, form, and ideology, ideology of a text. The video representations, presentations then end with Anne Kvetkovic's public feelings in a time of pandemic an entertaining and interactive lecture workshop in four episodes about pandemic feelings and keywords circling around mass hysteria, which are the result of monthly writing salons from April to July of this year. She thinks with and draws from graphic artist Linda Berry's pandemic diary, which uses list making and spiral drawing in response to the question, how did then become now? making room to reflect on the recurring topics of this conference and let the mind hysterically wander. This self-guided online conference is designed so you can choose how to consume it. To either watch the representation in daily doses, leave, circle back and revisit in subsequent order or binge watch the night before the live Q&A on Thursday, October 29, 2020 at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Although I wish we could all be together in person, I'm very much excited about the meaningful presentations our guest speakers have so generously shared. Thank you, Lamar, Bruce, Anne Kvetkovic, Eric Edwards, Erica Edwards, Kathleen McHugh, and Terry Pickens for inviting us into your homes and thinking of such diverse, engaging, and inspiring presentations that attest to the tireless labor you put into more engaging formats to discuss such timely topics uh, circulating around hysteria, performance, politics, and effect. I hereby spread my deepest gratitude to Professor Jennifer Dever Brody for organizing this self-guided conference with me in such time of chaos and uncertainty and a tireless support for this project. I also want to thank the Department of Theater and Performance Studies, the Center of Comparative Studies and Race and Ethnicity and the Taube Center and specifically its faculty director, Professor Charlotte von Robert and Associate Director, Dr. Shaina Hammerman as the, and the Austrian Science Fund for so generously supporting this event. And most importantly, I want to thank you for tuning in. We all wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And I hope you will be inspired by the many thoughtful representations 
continued the ever contagiously growing hysteric dialogue and enrich the field even further. Enjoy and thank you. And if you're able to, please don't forget to use your right to vote.